before I begin this next video, this next story, I just wanted to say if you have recently gotten a response to a comment that you may have left a very long time ago, I do want to apologize. For some reason that I can't explain, YouTube has withheld so many comments. I went into my settings and checked to see if I had comments restricted or held for a review, and I didn't. I may have at some point during the time when some of those comments came through, and I just did not get them. But I've been going through, and I've been trying to answer people, and there may be a few that I miss. But I just want everyone to know, if you take the time to watch my videos and you take the time to comment, the ones who are just there to comment, even if it's a difference of opinion, I appreciate your input. And I just want everyone to know that I'm sorry that these comments are late. You know, these responses to your comments are late. I'm going to start really watching my YouTube um, content and see what's going on with uh, YouTube and why I'm not getting these comments. I do have a um, Facebook page. Let's Talk True Crime. It's um, basically just the same as my YouTube. I just put my videos on there so there's a second place for people to watch. It will bring you back to YouTube. In the Friday, February the 14th, 1997, Donald Ray Billings was involved in a single vehicle accident at around 5 p.m. near the Hungry Mother grocery store in Marion, Virginia. He was driving his sister's car when he slid off the road. I have not been able to find any reports from any sheriff of the Smith County Sheriff's Office or any other law enforcement for a report of this accident. Other motorists who witnessed the incident said that he appeared unharmed and they asked if he needed an ambulance. He assured them that he was okay. He locked up the sister's car and put the keys in his pocket and started walking down the road. He was never seen again. He was a very loving, caring, and responsible person, according to his sister. She told me a story about Don that I'm going to share with you. I remember one time he was in Marion and it was Christmas. There were no stores open and there was a family that broke down in town. They spoke very little English, but somehow he managed to get them to go home with him and told them to stay with his girlfriend while he went back and worked on their vehicle. Luckily, he was a very good mechanic and he managed to get their vehicle fixed. He filled their stomachs up and gave them some food to take with them before they went on their way. He was very close to his sister and his mother and spent every Friday night with his sister going bowling. It was something that they never missed. She knew something wasn't right when he didn't show up, but was advised that she couldn't report him missing for 48 hours. Two days later, she was informed that her vehicle had been involved in an accident and there was a confirmed sighting of her brother. According to law enforcement, there have been many rumors and theories that have circulated about his disappearance. Drug dealers put out a hit on him is one story. One story is that he went into the witness protection program for ratting out these drug dealers who were manufacturing meth. Others say he wandered off of the roadway to take a shortcut through the woods and died of exposure. Well, did they take dogs out and look for his remains? Someone else said that he may have hitched a ride with a truck driver at the village truck stop in Atkins, Virginia. The only thing we know for sure is that something happened to this man. He would never have been capable of putting his mother through this ordeal. According to law enforcement, the woods surrounding the road were searched, and he was last seen walking. The road he was last seen walking down the area, the woods around that road was searched. It was a cold day, the day that he disappeared, and it is feasible that he may have sustained a minor head injury in the accident that could have caused some confusion. They believe it is possible that he wandered into the forest 
and passed out and stayed there overnight. However, they have never been able to find his remains. If you have any information regarding what may have happened to Donald Ray Billings, please contact the Smith County Sheriff's Office at 276-782-4056. He was last seen on February the 14th, 1997 in Marion, Virginia, near Abingdon in that area. Donald Ray Billings was a white male. He was 30 years old at the time that he went missing. He was five foot six and weighed 160 pounds. He was last seen wearing blue jeans and brown shoes. He has brown hair and brown eyes. He wore a mustache and he has a gap between his two front teeth. It is believed that Billings may have hitched a ride with a truck driver at Adkins, Virginia, along Interstate 81, between Bristol and Roanoke. Now, did any truck drivers come forward and say, yeah, I picked up a man hitchhiking that fit that description? There was something off with Donnie Ray Billings the day he went missing. Normally fun-loving and charismatic, he was in an unusual mood. He made some odd comments and was behaving strangely to his sister. Donnie just wasn't himself, she said. Home from work, when she had just gotten home from work that day, sometime around 3.30 that afternoon, she had been staying with him and his fiance at their home on Keller Lane in Marion, Virginia where her now husband, Jimmy, had spent the day tinkering on a car. At the time, she didn't really notice, but she later, when she thought about it, she thought his behavior seemed to be a little bit odd and a little bit off. It seemed like he was trying to get her and Jimmy out of the house. At one point, he came up to her and said, You know, I would never do anything to hurt Mom. It didn't occur to me at the time, but later I thought, That is what got me. Out of all of his actions, whatever it was he was getting ready to do was dwelling on him, and he he knew it was going to hurt Mom. I think whatever it was, it was eating at him. So it seems like that they don't, This man just, he got into a very light car accident. He was not injured that anyone could tell. There were witnesses who spoke to him. They said that he locked up the car and walked away. And that was the last time he was ever seen by anyone. And if anyone ever came forward and said they remembered seeing this man hitchhiking or that any truck driver may have come forward and said they gave him a ride. It's never been reported. I told him, I know you wouldn't hurt Mom. Eventually, Billings handed her a $20 bill and asked her and Jimmy to ride to Food City to get the stuff for a fish fry. When they returned, Billings and the Dodge Daytona were gone. Now, this was her car. Strangely, she says that there was some contents inside of his freezer that had been emptied out onto the floor. She thought it was strange the the items from the freezer being put down onto the floor, but she wasn't really concerned about him driving her car. He'd borrowed her car before, and she wasn't really worried about it. Now... That night, they were to go bowling, and this was something that they did every Friday evening at 7 p.m. They were part of a local bowling league, and it was Valentine's Day, but they had already made plans to spend their evening at the bowling alley. She said he never missed a game, that he loved the atmosphere of the bowling alley. He was often known to hand out quarters to the children so that they could play the slot games and 
you know, these vending games where they try to win a prize. He would give them quarters for those machines, and he just loved uh, the competition of being part of the bowling league. But he didn't show up that night, and this was unlike him. So, unknown to her at the time, later, a county deputy had been called out to a car accident involving her Dodge Daytona. At around 5 p.m., not long after she had left for Food City, the car had run off the road and gotten stuck along Highway 16. According to news reports, the wreck was reported by a local man who was traveling down that highway. Cleve Compton who ran the nearby campground, told police that he'd been traveling along that road toward Hungry Mother State Park when the car passed him and nearly hit a truck. I didn't see the wreck, he said. He'd gone on ahead of me, but when I came around the curve, he was down under those trees, down over the embankment, I guess. Now, was the plan of Donald or Donnie Billings to take his sister's car and leave? And when this accident occurred, and he was driving erratically, um, once again, was he under some influence of some substances or something like that? Uh, or was he just in a real big hurry to get out of town before his sister had time to come back from the store Maybe he was trying to put as much distance as he could. His sister says he liked to drive fast. He was real bad about going high speed. Um, he just loved, he was just like, he liked to drive fast to kind of scare the other people in the car, just kind of in a playful way. She said that um, Compton had stopped and asked Billings if he was okay. Billings told him that he was, and Compton told the police that he saw Billings walk up a nearby driveway as he was leaving. A second person said they also saw him right after this car accident, and from there, no one reported ever seeing him again. State police quickly took over the investigation, so when she called and placed several frantic calls to the sheriff's office, Asking if anyone had seen her brother, the department had no accident, no record of the incident. So see, her brother didn't show up Friday night. Friday night goes on throughout the night. They don't hear from him. They don't see him. Saturday comes and she starts calling. She calls the sheriff's office, but see, the state police had picked up this case. So the sheriff's office had no record of this wreck. She was told that she couldn't report her brother missing until 48 hours had passed. Or she had to show some type of proof that he was incompetent, that he was a danger, or that he was, you know, in some, he, he had done something to somebody and had committed a crime and, and, so they told me that I had to wait to report him and that he ha that I would have to report him for stealing my car. Well, I didn't want to do that, she said, because I didn't want to get him into trouble. I just wanted to know if he was okay. It was Sunday before she finally found out about the crash. Um, a, a deputy had gotten in touch with her and told her that they had found out about this crash. The fact that he had left this accident scene and no one had seen him since caused concern. So deputies with their canines and members of the Marion Rescue Squad and some of his family and friends traveled around the area looking for him. They put together a search and rescue team and they inspected some of the nearby parks. And the Hungry Mother State Park is a vast kind of a forest type of park. There's a lake, campgrounds, and things around there. So they began searching the park later that week with two teams, and they even sent divers into the lake 
and some of the other local waterways to search for him, but they never found anything. We had people walking up up and down the mountain. We've checked every building and riverbank. There's nothing. Nobody's heard from him. There's never been any trace from him since then. So his family and friends put together a missing persons poster and put these up all around the area with his photo that would hope that would jog someone's memory of maybe having seen him. We did everything we could. We interviewed people. His girlfriend, they were supposed to get married that same year. We looked every place that he might have been. He was very close to his mother, but none of his family heard from him. His sister was quick to dismiss reports that he had talked about suicide. I can't see my brother doing anything like that, she said. She pointed out that her brother, at that time, had big plans for his future. He and his girlfriend were set to be married in May. He had also recently purchased some property near his mother's home. And he was very close to his family. His mother was in poor health, and he stayed very close to her. There was nothing in the evidence to show what had happened to him, so the investigation came to a standstill. A Virginia State Police investigator followed up on tips and reported sightings as far as away as Myrtle Beach and Louisiana. One even turned out uh, a report turned up from Chicago. Someone in Chicago said that they saw someone who resembled Billings on the railway, but nobody was able to confirm and they just assumed that it probably wasn't him. Not one credible lead was ever found. It was definitely one of those unsolved mysteries that nobody can tell you what really happened. He was a nice young man. He had a good standing in the community. He was close to his family. Following his disappearance, Billing was entered into the Regional Organized Crime Information Center, which provided resources for missing persons investigations at the time. He was also entered into NAMIS, which is the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System. So now Billings had a twin brother named Ronnie. They were Donnie and Ronnie. Now they took DNA samples from the brother, the twin brother, and placed them into CODIS. Twice in the last several years, investigators thought they'd caught a break when they found human remains. In 2015, human bones discovered in a field in Bland County were thought to possibly belong to Billings. However, after DNA comparisons with the twin brother, as well as other, and they took DNA from, um, well, they what, what they're saying is, is that DNA was entered of other missing men in the area, and they still have not identified those remains, but they did not match the twin brother. So they don't, they knew it wasn't him. Again, in 2018, remains were found near Hungry Mother State Park, um, and hope was that maybe they had finally solved this case. But these remains were later identified as a man who had been reported missing from Minnesota. Since Billings' brother and other family members' DNA was entered into CODIS, an untold number of comparisons have been made that have helped to identify other men, and Donnie Billings has been excluded in each one. Now, here's some rumors. Of course, we know that with any of these cases, and especially in a small area like Marion, Virginia, 26 years of worrying and chewing over rumors has worn the family down. 
He was described as a mama's boy who hardly made a move unless he talked to his mother about it. His sister said rumors of his entry into witness protection helped the mother to believe that he hadn't just gone off. So she had heard rumors and people had come and talked to her and said they believed he had gone into witness protection. Now there was some talk, and I talked about this in the earlier part of this video, that he had gotten involved in some drug informants uh, with some drug dealers or that he maybe had turned the evidence on them. This was a rumor. And if the police knew anything about this, they didn't talk about it. So when these rumors started that he'd gone into witness protection, his mother felt a little bit more relieved with that possibility than he just ran off or he went crazy or he, you know, would just up and leave the family. The sister recalls her last interaction with her brother, remembering the comment about not wanting to hurt his mom. Whatever he had on his mind that day was eating at him really badly. This comment sticks out in her mind above everything else because of the closeness of his family. He had plans for the future, and all of a sudden his this change came about him. I guess it settled Mom a little bit when she heard these rumors that he'd gone into witness protection. She couldn't come. She couldn't allow herself to think anything else. That he would not reach out to her unless he was being prevented from it. This is, though they acknowledge that they have no way of knowing for certain because of the program's secrecy, local police never believed that. They said they didn't think he was a um, good candidate for the witness protection and he was known to use drugs from time to time. His sister believes that's what was stored in the freezer that day. She believes he had gotten into the freezer to dig out his drugs that he kept hidden away in there and took off. His abrupt disappearance following a minor fender bender uh, doesn't fit the theory that he'd been entered into witness protection. This disappearance of her son took a devastating toll on the mother. She said she didn't care if she lived or died after that. She got to where she wouldn't eat. She didn't want to get out of bed. Four years after her son's disappearance, she died without ever knowing what happened to him. When his mother died, his sister thought surely if he was alive, he would make some attempt at coming to her funeral or but he he was never seen now sometime after his uh, his mother's death the sister heard another rumor that was supposed to have been a, an inmate that had told a story that billings had been beaten to death so the sheriff at the time said that he believed that this was just an attempt on some inmate's part to get a lighter sentence or to get some time out of jail. This has been known to happen a lot. Inmates will offer a story, and sometimes it's not true at all. In um, Jailhouse informants. So they believe that this man was just hoping that maybe he would get his sentence reduced. And they never really thought that there was anything to this rumor. Sometimes inmates would contact them and say, I've got some information for you. And they would bring them downstairs. They would give them something to eat, pop, coffee, a cigarette, some time out of their jail cell. So often they would just come and not really have anything to talk about. They have looked into many of the rumors, but so far they have not found anything that was, you know, that they could substantiate. So many different scenarios and skepticism. 
There's been a lot of weird stuff that's happened since her brother disappeared, she says. So here's another rumor that the sister heard, and this, was, this wasn't really a rumor. This was something that she remembered and thought back on. A few weeks prior to his disappearance, she said he had given someone a ride to a place near the Virginia-West Virginia border. But she said ever since that day, he became um, suspicious. He was always looking over his shoulder. He was, his behavior changed, and it was like he had um, he was watching for something. So she and her husband traveled to that area to see if they could find anyone. We rode every back road from here to West Virginia. We walked into a couple of stores. We mentioned the guy's name, so she does know who the man was. And she said when they would mention this man's name to people, no one would talk. It was like once they said this man's name, that person would just be like, I don't know anything. And they knew that this man was trouble or something. It was just something that they got this feeling about that nobody wanted to discuss. So they just dropped it because they couldn't get anyone to talk. And uh, So despite the lack of credible leads, police and family members tend to agree that someone had a hand in his disappearance. Was he running from somebody? Had somebody contacted him that day and said, I'm coming after you. This was why he was in a hurry to get away. Had he done something the day that he drove this man to this place near West Virginia? Had he helped this man with something? Had, you know, had, nobody wanted to talk about this man. They don't go into any detail but nobody wanted to discuss him, whoever he was. The fact that a man spoke to him shortly after this crash and says that he, he said he was not injured, there was no trace of any blood or anything to show any indication that he was injured. And they do not believe that he stayed in the area. But where he went after he left this crash is anybody's guess. People don't really just vanish. I don't think you can just vanish off the face of the earth without some help from somebody. So they believe that he either caught a ride with some truck driver or someone else along the highway. He could have gone into Hungry Mother State Park and hid away in some cave or something. Some people have suggested they even searched some of the caves and things in those areas. Did he call someone up? I wrecked my car. I need a ride. Maybe he called the wrong person. Each year on February the 14th, the anniversary of his disappearance, his name and his social security number is put back into the system in hopes that some activity will show up. But nothing has year after year. We never give up on these cases, no matter how much time has passed. His sister says the possibility of never knowing what happened to her brother unnerves her. But she also says she doesn't necessarily want to know if it was as terrible as some of the rumors that people have said. I wouldn't want to think that my brother was beaten to death. I think just like her mother, she wants to live with this idea that he was hiding away, that he had no other choice, that someone was maybe going to harm him or his family. Maybe this is the reason why he said to his sister, I, I would never do anything to hurt mom. Maybe this person threatened to come there and harm his family, so he left. With nearly three decades having passed since he was last seen, 
McCormick hopes that people who had information will finally come forward. Maybe if somebody was afraid to say something then, and so much time has passed, maybe they will come forward and we can get some new leads. They have encouraged the public to reach out. And anyone that has any knowledge of anything that may have happened to Donnie Ray Billings, you can contact the Sheriff's Office at 276 786- 783-7204 and you may remain anonymous. So despite all the different theories and thoughts of witness protection, there's really never been anything. Sometimes people will find stuff years later that someone has written down or kept or someone will come forward with some real information to say, This is what happened to this man. This is what, you know, I helped him out or I couldn't live with myself any longer. The jailhouse informant suggesting that he was beaten to death. For what reason did he say? As I talked about earlier, there were rumors that he had gotten involved in something to do with drugs and that some people believed he had informed on some drug dealers and others say that he himself maybe he had owed money to drug dealers or something to do with that that's that's a big kind of a big rumor that usually goes around in these types of cases and I don't know even though his sister did say that she believed he did use drugs from time to time it doesn't say what type of drug He had kept it in the freezer, she believed. That was why he had rushed and grabbed the stuff out of the freezer, probably dropping stuff on the floor. Um, I guess, in a way, I kind of like to lean toward the mysterious part of this, just like the mother and the sister, to believe that maybe there was a possibility that he did just run away. Maybe in the hopes of um, inspiring his family, finding out what he might have gotten involved in. If he did have drug dealers after him, if a hit was out on him, if someone had threatened his family. But as of right now, this is all there is. And if anything ever comes up more on this man, I've listened to several videos on YouTube about him, and it's pretty much the same details as what I have talked about here it's just a mystery to this day. Thanks for watching.